please get started. I appreciate everybody attending tonight, our finance committee meeting. Yes, not yet. Not this I want to do it twice. We'll do it later. So within uh, the finance committee meeting, basically uh, to discuss budgetary aspects of that. And uh, Christina, I believe you have a presentation for us to go over some things. And if you have any questions um, regarding your presentation, we can go from there. Thank you very much. And thank all of you. I, I said I used to work in a school district, and I haven't seen as many people at a board meeting in a long time. So welcome. We went to work and we looked at every single budget submission from all of the, across the district. And it was a team of people that were involved, every single, principal, every single administrator, every single curriculum leader, department chair, were all part of this process in terms of really looking at our needs versus our wants. So we're here tonight to give some good news. We're still not home free, but there is some good news. And we've made a lot of movement. The first thing in terms of, you know, you need to see the screen as well. This is an awkward place. Um, if we look at the screen, we updated our re revenues and expenses. Our re revenues actually improved by over $110,000. And in May of each year, we get a template from the county that says, Here's the total amount of all of your assessed properties within your school district boundaries. So that increased by over $4.4 million. And we also get a template in January. So that was the increase over that period of time. All that new construction that we've had, hasn't, they really have not necessarily been on our tax rolls yet, but it's starting to stream in there because the county has been late in terms of processing all of the new buildings. Our expenses, we went through our due diligence process and our expenses have also decreased dramatically by $1.2 million. Again, every single account was reviewed, every single account uh, we discussed, and again, we're still not done. We have more work to do. So between now and June 30th, we'll be very, very busy um, looking at what else can we look at a little differently. And I also will say with under, with under Dr. Joe, uh, Dr. Bonatta's um, leadership and also Mr. Seltzer, we've really been looking at all of the educational aspects. I think all of you know I am not, I am not an educational person, so everyone here um, on the team has been providing us a lot of updates that we can include in the budget. The net result, in April, we were $3 million in deficit. Right now, we're looking at about a million seven. Sorry. No I have to get here from time to five there. If you look at the details, salaries, benefits, contracted services, um, purchase services, other purchase services, books, supplies, uh, equipment, miscellaneous fees, and other items, this list last time was, as we mentioned, this is decreased by about, this used to be 60. This would be $68 million. I will tell you that every single category has been decreased. The largest decrease came about in the books and supplies, and the predominant reason, yes, sir. Can you make that a little bigger? I don't know if everyone in the audience can see it. I will post it. Yeah, I'm sure that's right now. We should be able to make that closer. It says 63.7. I'm sorry? If you could just make sure. it bigger. Um, and then just because of your... Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. That's okay. Just takes it off the screen. You may be able to get it even more. Take it. Try 80 and see what happens then. 
Yeah. Yeah. You go to the left where there's a plus and minus sign, you should just get the name. I'm sorry. Let's go here and then we'll subscribe. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's us. That's going to be 400. 75. Now count that. Do you see that? Okay. Every single line item has been decreased. The largest decrease, as I was saying, was in the 600 category. And in the 600 categories are electricity and our, our natural gas costs. We spent a lot of time looking at our historical uh, cost for electricity. And the reason we had originally had a much higher number was because of the construction that will still be ongoing. We had to come up with what's the right value for our electricity without construction. So what we've seen here, a lot of work done in the 600 category was really spent on our utility costs. Our salaries, we decreased our salary costs from before by about $200,000. We also, our benefit costs, we're looking at about 143000 decrease uh, from, from a month ago. Contracted services came down about 101000 Purchase services came down about 100000 um, We have our our uh, miscellaneous fees even came down by about 13000 And our other uses down here in these two categories, that's where we have our debt service, principal and interest payments. So we were able to take a look at some of the other costs in those categories. So again, we're still in... We still have work to do because our goal is trying to deliver a balanced budget, but we're going to show this evening that even if we can't decrease costs any further and we can't increase revenues anymore, and this is the outcome, we have some ways in which we can bridge the gap for next year. Um, in addition, we wanted to show you that if we, have a, if we do not accept the exceptions, that, if, that we still use the Act 1, um, increase. Our, our debt deficit increases to about 1.8 million. And if we have, if we assume that there's no tax increase whatsoever, our deficit increases to about 2.8 million. So it's quite dramatic in terms of the change from looking at 1.7 with a millage increase of about 0.46 million three notes. $60 a year, $5 a month if you look at it on a per month basis. We all have contractual increases that we have to abide by. So if we do nothing and no knowledge increase, that's what we're looking like. Obviously, that's not sustainable. If we take a look and say, well, let's assume it is just a half one increase alone, and we continue with the 2.4% half one index, what does that look like? 
Well, we're at the $1.8 million loss, and then that also continues to increase, but at a lower rate as the top. So we would end five years from now at a deficit of about $2 million. Obviously, this is not sustainable. If we look at what we're proposing, we look at both an increase of the Act 1 index plus the exceptions for, um, for pension and for special ed. We're looking at this last year, 1.7, and then in five years, we're at about 1.8. The rate of growth is much slower because we're assuming that we would increase taxes, at least this reflects an increase in taxes based upon the Act 1 index. And so that just kind of gives you a perspective. So what's the revenue generated uh, from the exception and the index the going index, forward if we take it this year? Well, the index for this year is about $900,000, and the exception is about $155,000. Now, each year, obviously, the index number will be different because it's continuing to roll. But if you start $900,000 on up, um, the exceptions will also be based each year on based upon what's the PEASER's rate of increase and what is the rate of increase of our special ed expenditures. Those are two separate calculations. So your model doesn't take into consideration any growth in the revenue, correct? It does. It actually assumes we put in there a half a percent of an assessment increase year to year. So there, is some there is revenue growth. Um, we also assume the slight 2% increase in state funding trying to be optimistic, um, but yes, there is definitely some growth in there. And we also assume the 3% EIT increase. So the revenue increase in the projection uh, is taking into account the assessment increase, it's not the construction? Yes. yes. Well, it does take into the, the assessment increases are taking into consideration. Okay, that is included in that. Okay. In the I didn't know if that was existing construction reassessments. Mm -hmm. No, that's new construction. Okay. Because we did also include for this year, it's what we have today on the assessment rules plus $13 million of new construction that should be on the assessment rules within the 1819 school. Is that, and that, uh, that increase, is that based on, um, is that, to, to describe, is that based on uh, historical increases? I look at historical increases year to year, okay. after the count coming by the assessment. <laughs> but for see, if that model doesn't take into place the consideration of constantly and annually reevaluating and adjusting, correct? Absolutely not. This is just a one time view. Again, if we do nothing else, we just look at the numbers. It doesn't say, as we do each and every year, when we go through this budget process. It's a very tedious process whereby we're looking at what is it that we need to operate this school district and what education, what, what are the educational programs that we want to provide our students. That exercise that goes on each and every year is not reflected here. Thank you. She's not done yet. You want to wait till she's done? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then just take the question. Why? We'll let you. We're going to try to keep it up until six o'clock open, open, so she can get to her program. So we also want everyone to see what happens if we find a way to balance the budget this year, so we can grow revenues and decrease our expenses. What might this look like? Well, if we do so, and we. We find ourselves a little bit positive, maybe not ninety-six thousand dollars in the in the positive, but we're still looking at if we continue to have some Act One index increases. And the reason that's important, all of our other expenses are, are really growing at a much higher rate than our revenues. If you look at that first chart, you see that our revenues were only growing at less than five percent. Our expenses are growing at a much higher rate than that. Could you describe what those expenses are just for the reason? Sure, there's salary costs, teasers costs, health care costs, those, those are the big items. Uh, because 80% of our budget is tied to salary costs plus benefits. Um, so when you look at that, then you realize that you're looking at these costs that are increasing here, much higher rate than our revenue side is. 
Now, going forward, this looks good, but it also, just, and this exercise assumes that there's an act one index increase. However, just as we said before, this does not take into consideration the work that is done each and every year to look at the budget submissions, the details, and also to evaluate the ed education <coughs> program, which is which is most important to everyone. This one's going to be a little hard to see. After our meeting in April, I wanted to make sure everyone understood we are not broke as a district. We have funds in various allocations. Some of these allocations can be touched, some of them cannot be touched. For example, what you see out here is about $2.9 million in a trust fund for our retiree obligations. And those include our health care obligations, any of those things have to be retired. So that's in an ir irrevocable trust. Those monies cannot be touched, so we can't look here. But if you look at some of these other funds, here we are at the end of June. We have a fund balance of about $2.4 million. Now, that includes some special uh, commitments. There's $570,000 in the general fund, and that is allocated for teachers increases, health care increases. And we've used, that number used to be much larger a few years ago. We've used some of that money. The other area, we have $40,000 allocated to athletics. Once again, that's something that is committed for athletics. And then what is called the unassigned fund balance is $1.2 million. It's like your, your savings account. What can you do with your savings account? So, but if you think about, if our budget is as large as it is, almost $70 million, and you only have $1.2 million in your savings account, that's not a lot of money. The rating agencies pay particular attention to the unassigned fund balance. When that gets to the level that ours is, and they look at it on a percentage of total expenditures, they're very concerned about their stability going forward. Um, they like to see, I've been on many calls with rating agencies, and they like to see they like to see board actions or at least goals of keeping the fund balance, the unassigned fund balance, at like a five to six percent. And if you're not there, they want to understand what's your goal or how are you going to get there. So our thoughts are that we would like to preserve this as much as possible and even add to it going forward. Some of the other funds, the next two funds, are de dedicated for the construction. Uh, that's what we're using in order to fund that portion of the construction uh, project. One of those funds was actually created whenever we issued some debt. So the debt service that we're paying is a result of some of the funds that we receive and we'll be requisitioning those monies to pay off our contractors. We also have about $4.7 million in something called a capital reserve fund. That has been designated for two things. One is to take care of our buildings, the bricks and mortars. Um, and the next is about $1.9 million um, to take care of our vehicles. We have been very lucky here to be able to have with that type of funding, we've been purchasing a lot of our vehicles. Um, that may or may not continue. We actually have a proposal that we'll be sharing with the board in June about leasing our vehicles. We think that would be a much better way uh, for us to finance these large acquisitions and preserve some of these monies for maybe other things. There's a risk management fund. Um, if you have a large insurance claim, there's a deductible, and if you have a lawsuit, that's a fund that gives you a great deal of comfort. And again, this district is very lucky to have the kinds of money sitting in these accounts. Um, the district I work for did not have these types of funds. I can tell you that. I wish we had. Um, there's also activity funds in the high school, middle school. Again, we're not touching that because those are activity funds for lots of students in the schools. And the same thing with district activities and grants. So the message here is. We're not broke. We have, we have funds. The question is, what is the most prudent, fiscally responsible way for us to use these funds, and how can we do so, and look at our budget as well?
Just a few ideas, and there are many, many ways in which we can look at these scenarios, but just a few simple scenarios. Let's, let's assume that we can't find a way to close that gap, and that we are looking at $1.7 million of a deficit. Well, there are some one-time solutions. One of the solutions might be to go ahead, let's keep our money side fund balance, but let's release that 570000 that's up there. Well, if that's the case, we would still be short by about $1 million. So that's not the complete solution, but it may be one part of the solution. The next one is use our capital reserve. When you put monies in a capital reserve, you cannot easily move those monies back into the general fund. I had a discussion with the PDE and the Office of the Controller a few weeks ago. We are permitted to reallocate those monies for debt services purposes. So, for example, right now we have about $5 million in the general fund to pay debt service. Let's assume we use the $500,000 of the um, allocation for easers and for health care increases. So we're still short by about a million. Uh, what we would do is we would reassign, we would ask the board to make a new designation and change, let's say, the designation for vehicles to debt service. We would then show that the fund balance, the general fund, would only be paying $4 million to that debt service, and the capital reserve would pay a million. So that's, that's an idea. Uh, that we can do, and we can actually utilize almost all of that balance. The balances here represent the balances as a table for it. So that would be one solution. Again, it's a, these are all one-time solutions for next year to kind of bridge us. The next idea is there is this risk management fund. With board approval, there are no restrictions. We can move that back to the general fund. Um, we are looking at how much have we really used this fund over the past few years. Um, it may be that we don't need as much as we have in there. We do have insurance programs that cover a lot of the potential risk um, that this represents. It's always nice to have a cushion. The question is, do we need that level of cushion or can we reduce it to help us? And then the, this last one is just, you know, what if we just took a million dollars from the capital reserve and maybe $700,000 from the risk management fund. That's an idea. But there are lots of per permutations about how we can solve this problem if, in fact, we can't solve it any other way. Thank you, Christina. Thank you very much. Yes. If anybody would like to ask a question now, this would be a good time. <coughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Hi. I'm Rachel Mary. Thank you very much for your presentation. I really imagine what the job is to be to get all these numbers and get it together. So I thank you for that. Um, with that being said, I think it's very difficult for someone like myself, because it's a little common folk, to understand exactly where all of these numbers are coming from because there must be a ton that goes into it. So to make an accurate assumption as to what we're doing is very difficult in the amount of time that we're given. And so I personally would ask that in the future, we have more information so we can be more efficient when we are at these meetings. I think that would be helpful for everyone involved. Also, everything that I hear that you're saying is moving money around, and I completely understand that that's not fixing the problem that we do money. So with the tiny bit of information that I feel like we were actually given to make assessments, I mean, I saw two big things. One, the very first slide, the very first sentence, um, you know, I understand how it is super slow, and I, I also have felt that pain from that. Um, but is there an accurate forecast as to where we are going to be? Because that is a million dollars behind from one year. So with the healthy plans that are going, I mean, is there somebody looking at good? I mean, so you, I mean, we are surveying how many new homes are being developed, when is this coming up, how much they're coming. And then with that being said, then, like, I didn't see anything about cost for students because that has to be bringing new people in, and I don't know the percent, but I have been seeing the class sizes, and I've been seeing that there has been a drastic decrease in from primary school to intermediate school, intermediate school to 
uh, middle school, uh, these class sizes are shrinking. And so from the number that they're starting with, so these people have to be going somewhere, but they're still paying taxes. So is that then being considered? And then my other question is, and I know this is a bunch in a short little bit of time, but I try to look for big numbers. And so the number that I've heard, and I know there's a lot of teachers here, so I don't know exactly anything about this. I'm not employed by the district. But 80% is towards teachers in healthcare. And I know I'm in healthcare. So healthcare is huge, it's so expensive. So I don't know how anything is set up but without touching anything whatsoever. I don't know, like, I work for Giant Health, and I do things with healthcare constantly. And one of the things, and this very well may already be in there, but is to incentivize people to get lower healthcare rates, whereas there are programs in place to help get those healthcare costs down. And also, you're huge, you're part of what Allegheny County School, they're all negotiated together, I'm assuming correctly. That is huge negotiating power. Like, where are they, who's negotiating these healthcare rates to get these down for such large, massive? That is something that can be done outside of this, that can save millions upon millions of dollars that I personally have helped with, and, and without touching anything whatsoever. So I don't know if that's being done, and if that is being done, what's the percent that we're looking at to decrease these, because I feel like we are jumping the gun and to even dream of these talking about even a tax increase by putting that back on the people that are contributing to the um, to the, um, the township. In addition, I hear I'll let there, if you will. In addition to this, I mean, I don't see anything I'm, anyone who's remodeled knows we go over budget, right, all the time remodeling. What percent are we over with our remodeling? I mean, where are we, where do we budgeted for that? Where are we now? So that we can see, okay. Um, I can speak to it. In two, November of 2016, we were budgeted at 94 million, and we're budgeted at $94 million. So that's perfect. Right now, to complete. That's wonderful. That's so, great news. So, so all the rumors of, that are that are circulating about the construction being the problem, the construction project is not a concern. So that's wonderful news. So my, my question is, when I'm seeing this and then in our budget, that was already budgeted for that extra 26, what, 26 million I saw? Can you see if I'm there are, there, are two, there, are two, there are two projects that are tied to the construction project. So 52 million. Okay, so that was already budgeted, so that's not even an issue, so that should not even be being like, correct, correct. So those are just my two cents of seeing, and just tiny little bit of information that we're trying to like make an accurate assumption. And if there's anyone that can talk, talk to healthcare, I mean, we are, we are part of the Allegheny Intermediate Consortium. Uh -huh. So we already pull all of our buying power with how many other districts are? Uh, 40, 42 total districts that are part of the Allegheny Intermediate Unit. So we feel that we are getting the best rates possible based on the, the power of the 42 districts. You never get the best rates unless you're going back again. Because I negotiate. Well, yeah, I, I don't do the negotiating. Yeah, yeah, I don't do the negotiating, but we have joined that consortium. And yeah. we are. Well, let's go back and push again with them because they will take it. I mean, yeah, I, I, the I, guy I, who I, I, with has retired, but I mean, yeah. I know that well, if you're well. talking what these numbers are and they really do what wants best for these school districts, and they are saying, what can we do? There might be something where we can't, we won't even have to touch anything, but I don't know who you guys are toward through, whether I'm thinking last time I saw it was Highmark, but I mean, Highmark has all these plans that say, hey, if you are, your BMI is this, and your blood pressure is this, and you know, you're hitting three out of 10 things, just three out of 10 things, we are going to give you a discount on your healthcare rate. And if you don't hit these, I want, we want you to enroll in a program that can help you get there. And you still are going to get the discounted rate. We, but have, we choose, have programs in place. Okay, I mean, that, I, that's what I didn't know. I had no idea. Just looking at trying to get that 80% without touching it. And even if we say 2% of that 80%, there's your budget. Can I clarify a few things? First of all, when I say salaries and benefits, the largest component in benefits is not health care. It's our retirement system. Well, okay, number one. <laughs> now, if that continues to increase, right, for next year, it's going to be 33.43%. So, so for that's every dollar. Then? No, no, what I'm saying is for every dollar that we pay in salaries to all of us, then that means 33 cents goes to pieces. Now, we do get a reimbursement of 50% back, but that's the largest component from an expense perspective. Healthcare is also in there, but our healthcare rate for next year. Is one the increase is 1.9 percent. When you go back historically, we have historical charts that the healthcare consortium provides us, and we look at the corporate 
of health care rates. And we compare them year to year to the increases that we're seeing. We are far lower than any of the corporate rates all across the board. So 1.9% is very good. Well, that's what you do. Yeah, that's what I said. I'm limited information. I just heard 80% is going to that. That includes, yeah, when you look at our retirement, our benefits, when you look at the retirement benefits, it is, it is a phenomenal benefit, but it's extremely costly. And it will continue to be very costly, even in the five years that we're projecting. The highest amount in the last year is 36%. So then let me ask you this, with these increasing class sizes and things like that, this budget will not allocate for any increase in teachers, or does that, is, does that increase? Is this budget for the increase in teacher enrollment, or? Enrollment is something that we monitor uh, weekly, daily, uh, with the new enrollments. We have a class size policy that helps us <laughs> to gauge and guide that, and we also compare our class sizes um, with our colleagues and peers and to what is best practice for our students. So that um, each time that we look at that and look at our enrollment, once it gets to the secondary schools, it's pretty consistent and um, the, that loosens up. But in our elementary programming, we really want to make sure that we look at that and monitor where our teachers are and how we can do that in our K-5 programming. And then I promise last question. Because we will have to go into executive session soon, just for things to have yes. Absolutely. So, I mean, I hear a lot of numbers. The numbers are so important, but also forecasting, obviously, is super important as to where we're going as a school district. I don't know. I didn't hear any vision as to where we want to be as a school district. And so, not taking into account, you know, it just seems like we're talking about putting budget. We're constantly going to be always playing catch up. So is there a vision as to where we are headed and what we want to be doing for? Because you have places like Mount London, Salpet, Upper St. Clair, I mean, you hear them, you go, oh, at least from a common standpoint, great school district, yes, we're going to produce the best. And that is something that I, I, don't, I don't know anything. My, I go to church, my kid goes to church about it. I don't, I don't know where we are and who we are. Well, I think we're great. So, with that, we're one of the best school districts in the world. Oh, see, I didn't, I didn't know that. Why am I not that? You do the radio. I'll tell you. So with that, I agree with Mr. Wilson. We are one of the best districts around. And um, yes, we can look at that. But even though that um, you may not hear about financial woes and concerns, this is not in isolation to the Chartres Valley School District. The retirement system that was mentioned is a statewide issue. So that's something that everyone is on everyone's radar. Um, some forecasting better than others, but I think what Christina has done a phenomenal job is looking at a five-year projection. This is what we need to do. So what is our goal? Our goal is to get ourselves in a great situation that is fiscally responsible so we can provide the most phenomenal programming for our students, for our South, for our community. That's where we need to be and continue to grow. But we need to make sure that we're physically responsible for doing so. And I think what she projected was a measure to do that. Then I think as comment though, then we need to understand what we are gaining that we don't have already with this budget. And that's that's something that I don't understand. Well, and that's if you want, we can chat more about that and maybe we can sit down and I can go through and explain that to you in more detail. Um, but it's not a five minute conversation. Mm -hmm. So what I, I'm going to propose is we're going to, the, the board has to have, we have some other uh, issues we have to attend to tonight, so we're going to break for about a 20-minute executive session. We'll be back in here for 6.30, start up up the public meeting. Okay? Thank you very much for being here. I hope you're all here when we get back. <laughs>